I'm not in this movie. I guess this means we're going behind the scenes with ILF. Sir, you may want to come take a look at this. I want everything loaded. We're looking at an extinction level event. They've created a barrier. No one can get in or out. We do have somebody inside. Well, who? We're going in. What are you doing to us? Oh. So what's the biggest challenge when it comes down to the, what we see on screen? All of it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> the, the, on a movie like this, just the sheer scale of it was the, mm -hmm. the biggest challenge for, for me. You know, we, typically when we break down a script, we, we kind of break it down into you know, the easy shots and the medium shots and the hard shots and the real impossible hero shots where we're going to take the best people in the facility and give them months to, to produce those shots. And, Breaking down the script of Battleship, it became clear that there were hundreds of those shots that we called hero shots, and that was that was huge. And the biggest challenge for me was um, making sure that we incorporate the imperfections because we're working so hard to make everything look great. And one of the mandates from uh, Peter was that the film feel gritty. And uh, typically, if it's it's a synthetic camera, synthetic environment, we want to frame everything beautifully. But uh, very early on in the production, we looked at World War II documentary footage, like the Battle of Midway, and we saw how the cameramen were overshooting the uh, what the planes were going, trying to anticipate, but not being able to. Or if an explosion happens, the camera shakes, or uh, a bunch of dust hits the lens. So it was uh, trying to put those imperfections back into the photography uh, to then make the whole thing feel more real uh, by uh, making it feel like you're, you're right there as opposed to this synthetic environment that's been created, which is what we did. Mm -hmm. so. Now, you mentioned that he had a very specific, Peter did, a very specific idea of it being gritty. Um, you know, talk a little bit about that collaboration. Is that, it seems like he had a very specific idea of everything he wanted. Is that easier for you, or does that make your job more difficult? Or, uh, Well, I mean, we're always, I mean, one of the things that we love about ILM is getting a chance to work with all these amazing directors, and the opportunity to work with Peter uh, allowed us uh, just, you know, to get hands-on, like, very early on in the process, and to get shots in front of him as soon as possible to be, so that we're not surprising him with, you know, working on a shot for, you know, like, months and then uh, it's not what he wants so uh, he wanted to see blocking uh, and then once he saw okay you guys know what you're doing take it to the next level and that was so important because the next level required so many layers and layers of water simulations with water with the churn and the spray and the mist and you know I'm sure Willie can speak to that mm -hmm. but that that was what why it was so important to be so collaborative was that there were so many departments downstream from uh, my department animation that uh, required intricate detail. It was a real pleasure working with Pete and he, he does bring so much just energy and enthusiasm along with that that kind of gritty aesthetic but it makes its own challenges too. Um, he, that energy is not contained. Peter's a, a very explosive person. He, he, he shouts and, and yells and, and and he knows what he wants, and if you don't quite deliver it, he'll he'll let you know. Mm -hmm. Now, is it as far as the timeline of the production goes? Like, you know, are you be, are you able to show him shots as you know certain things as the movie is filming, or is it just months down the road? Uh, we, we had developed animation tests uh, mm -hmm. for him to review. The tricky part is is that he's on a set in Hawaii. There's sure. actors. The light is. He's losing the light, and there's all these cameramen and all these people around him, and so he's. It, it wasn't. It, it's really, really hard for for it to be the main focus of his attention. But 
as much as possible, we'd, we'd steal away his time and, and show him work in progress tests of where we were going with the, uh, the look of the shredders or the look of the, uh, of the aliens or the ships. But uh, we really dove into the meat of the show when principal photography was finished. Now, were there any things that, that they wanted that he, that they just looked at it and said, ah, maybe not, maybe we can't do that? Like, were there any shots that were too difficult to get? You know, making a movie is always a process of, of distillation. You, you can't have everything that your imagination could show. Mm -hmm. But in terms of actually backing off because something was just too difficult, I don't think we did it in this movie. Mm -hmm. And it's, there, there's one big, there's like a three minute shot of the, the abandoning of the, uh, the John Paul Joneses mm -hmm. and Sinks. And that was just everyone, everyone in every department of ILM working towards, you know, making this the most epic shot we could, you know. And uh, Pete was constantly pushing us, you know, like in this section, you know, I want to see smoke and an explosion. And in this section, I want to see more uh, sailors jumping overboard. But it was, but even to the end part, he's like, you know, what else can we add to this? You know, what, what else can we do? Like, I want a sense of vertigo. I want to see how far this, they have to fall when they, when they jump. You know, and then what if the shredder bursts up out of the stern? Uh, and so <laughs> just building and building on top of uh, all these like layers of detail. And mm -hmm. uh, that, that was an epic shot and uh, we knew it had to be great. So. Yeah, that was quite a tense meeting when he dropped that one on us. Yeah. We had to work out how just a few weeks from the end of production, sure. we we're gonna split the whole ship in half and have the shredder shoot out. Yeah, that would, yeah, to have the ship split and then put in all that detail, uh, that was, that was very time consuming. When we watched the reel earlier, it seemed like the producers of this film really wanted to work with ILM. But what I want to know is what made you re what made you most excited about getting into this project? Uh, well, we had had the chance to ever work with uh, Peter Berg before, and you know, I'm I respect him kind of as an actor. I admire him as a filmmaker. You know, I was, I, I, I I like his movies, and uh, he has a certain kind of energy that he kind of brings to it, um, and his in, a, in a, a kind of a realism to the performances too that it kind of draw me in. So whenever I heard that he was making Battleship, kind of translating the game into a movie, I was pretty intrigued. I was skeptical because you know there's not a massive uh, narrative to that game, um, but intrigued. And so when we went down to LA, and, and this is three years ago, and Pete Berg, who's you know a pretty big personality, sits in the middle of the room and just kind of pitched the movie to us. And kind of from that moment, I was hooked. It had so many elements that I am kind of drawn to in visual effects, and one of them is that he he was kind of mandating authenticity. He wanted real ships, real ocean. He wanted collaboration with the Navy. He wanted to capture all this great footage to start with. And when you have that kind of commitment to authenticity from the outset, it kind of sets the tone for us and kind of raises the standard of our work. And also it's, it's about uh, the process and how he gets to that, that uh, reality. Uh, it's a very organic process. It starts with, uh, obviously, with a script and an idea and a, and a schedule and uh, a budget and a bunch of different things. But those things don't matter anymore because then you definitely have a sense that you're creating something. And things get messy when you, when you do that. <laughs> sure. So, and when you walk into a project like this, what is your greatest fear, ultimately? Mm. Well, my fear is that we weren't we were going to be, we be too expensive. I mean, the show, the scope and the, the amount of visual effects in this movie were massive. And so, you know, and I, I really wanted the opportunity to work with Pete on it, to help him kind of realize some of his ideas and translate them into images. But we really needed to go back to ILM and figure out how we could pull off the scope of this work, A, in the amount of time, but definitely within a budget that makes sense. And so uh, for for water, and this show is all kind of all about water. I mean, so many of the sequences took place in the ocean with a lot of intricate interaction. We, uh, we embarked on what we called the Battleship Water Project, and we got all our R&D guys together and, uh, and just redid our tool set. And we kind of re-engineered how we tackle those kind of large-scale simulations. And, and, and the benefits of that are what allowed us to be able to accomplish the work that we did. So it was essentially something that you built from the ground up? We were, we were building on, on past successes, to be honest. There was, there, ILM has done some great water shows in the past, you know, from 
Perfect Storm to through the Pirates of the Caribbean and Poseidon. So there are a lot of great technologies there and a lot of great minds here that have kind of contributed to those. But um, if we took those and applied them to hundreds of very, very complex water shots in this movie, it just didn't work. The math didn't work. We, so we needed to be able to, we needed to, to raise our game. So, um, you know, would you say that that, that is the thing that you learn most on this? What, or what I think was you that? learn about everything. I mean, it's kind of funny because you, we, we, you know, we do like 10 shows a year or something like that. I mean, for what, 30 years? Uh, so that's a lot of shows, and, and you, we find out that uh, it doesn't matter. You can reinvent every one of the shows just because you're in innovation. But we did learn a lot about water, and then we hope to take that into, uh, into our next show. Um, I think one of the things that this show was different from uh, all the other shows that we've done is, is the volume, the, you know, the scope, the amount of shots that you have in there and the fact that you need to be prepared to not just do one shot or ten shots but 300 shots. Mm -hmm. Well, I think uh, we heard earlier about how you know, the one shot just took was a year and three months. Now, how, what is the moment where you, where you really do know that that's it. You you finally finished a particular shot, or uh, you, you never know. You abandoned well, it. <laughs> well, in that case, that was the last shot to final. <laughs> yeah, so right. pretty much, we just ran out of time. And but it was, you know, that was uh, we called that the "You Sunk My Battleship" shot. It's the sinking of the John Paul Jones, and it was designed to be the most complicated shot in the movie. Pete wanted to to blow audiences away with it, and uh, you know, there the amount of um, resources on that one shot were pretty were pretty amazing were pretty intense you know but um, I think you know Pablo has, has said this you know with, with shots there are certain there's kind of a, a lifespan to a shot and there are lots of technical hurdles that you have to kind of reach and once you pass those then you're into kind of a more subjective realm and then it's really about art you know and the kind of lasting iconic image that you're trying to create for the screen and uh, and at a certain point sometimes shots just just reach that point and you know it, you know you're done. But you have to have the experience to uh, have a vision to say, okay, when we're going to start this shot, we're going to light it from here. Because if you change the lighting, you know, six months later, you're screwed. Mm -hmm. So uh, so you do have to, you know, start with a very artistic, you know, and, and, and um, you know, methodology-wise view of what you want. And at some point, yeah, I mean, you, you just have a kind of a checklist in your head of what the thing, all the things that you need to uh, that you need to hit. Do you ever find yourself going back towards the end of a project and wanting to just tinker? Always, no. always. <laughs> <laughs> if producers would let us, we do it all the time. <laughs> do you ever go? Do you ever sit in a movie theater and, and watch something that you've worked on and, and say, "Man, I wish I had another day on that"? Or um, I do. Yeah. Yeah, that's a little rough. I mean, I think the. Um, the, to me, the measure of a successful film is that I'm not actually sitting and thinking about the effects once I'm sitting in a theater and watching it, you know, from end to end. And this this movie, you know, is, is extremely fun, a lot, very entertaining and stuff. So, um, but I think by by our nature, um, we we're, we're never satisfied. <laughs>